What's going on everybody? Welcome to Seth's Project. My name is Seth. Today we're going to go over how I built this display case for a Harry Potter wand. I used some four quarter white oak for this project and I just ripped the pieces down on my table saw. I finally got around to building a accurate crosscut sled. I'm really glad I did. I need to build a bigger one. I need to build one for my dado set and I also need to build one for miters as well. Now it's time to start laying out the joinery. I'm laying out the bottom of the mortise and I will actually use the width of the tenon piece to lay out for the top. This gives me really accurate mortise and tenons. As you can see here, I just put the square on the face edge of the uh, style and I scoot the uh, rail over to it and that gives me a perfect width. I really like using blue tape on the face edge where the tenon will actually be protruding out. Um, that's so I can actually chop to the baselines and I can have a perfect uh, through tenon. And uh, I, I find it hard to see my lines on this white oak because it's got so many different variations in the grain and uh, it's easy to mistake them for knife lines. So I just eliminate all that and use blue tape. I would highly recommend doing that. I'm just using my mortising machine here to hog out most of the waste. I don't do the face side. I chop that with a chisel to make sure I get an absolute perfect fit. Um, here you can use a drill press. If you use a drill press, you can go from both sides and just chop to your lines on both sides. But uh, I just use my mortising machine.
Now it's time to cut the tenons. I cut this with a dovetail saw. I could have done it with a Japanese saw, but I just didn't. So to remove the waste, I just removed it with my fret saw and then I chiseled down to the baseline. And I think this is the best way to do it, it gives the most accurate fit. When chiseling down to a baseline, the most important tip that I can give you is to take as light of a cut as you possibly can all the way down to the baseline. It'll keep your chisel from pushing past the baseline and it'll keep your chisel sharp much, much longer. And working in this white oak, it absolutely destroyed these chisels so it, it was a grind just to sharpen these things constantly. I was not a huge fan with the way these chisels performed in this white oak. Um, my plan in the future is to upgrade to blue steel chisels. I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of blue steel than white steel. I, I prefer stability over sharpness just because I'm not a huge fan of sharpening chisels. I'm sure some of you will disagree with what I just said, but uh, in my personal experience I've had much better luck with blue steel chisels than I have white steel. Uh, the blades just last so much longer and it might be a little bit harder to sharpen but you get a lot longer um, use with it. But anyway let's get back to the project. Um, I'm cutting little tiny tenons on the bottom of these styles. This was something I kind of decided to do while the project was still under development I guess. Um, I'm really glad I did it. It turned out kind of cool. I don't normally do joinery really like this, but you guys will see what that's for in just a second. This was certainly a very odd tenon to cut, just because it's kind of like a half blind tenon. It's got that shoulder back, I don't know, it was weird, I had to chop it out. Really odd. I'm cutting the mortises for those baby tenons in this piece of walnut, but I ended up changing this to white oak in the end. I, I think the white oak looked better for this little curved bottom piece. And uh, so yeah, that's I did the same process in the white oak. Here I am cutting out the rabbit for the back panel, which you guys will see in just a little bit. All I've done here was set like a fence, I made like a quick fence for it and I just rode it along that fence and then I chopped to my baselines.
Just to kind of improve the look of the back panel, I didn't do just a solid piece. I did like a little chamfer on the inside. And uh, you guys will see what that's going to look like in just a second. So at this point, I haven't actually decided how I want this thing to kind of sit up. I cut some stopped grooves in the side of the styles with my router. Um, and here I'm just chiseling the end square. And I did the same thing with the rabbit for the back panel. So I'm using a couple of walnut pieces as like shelves and I'll be cutting little grooves in those for the wand to actually sit in and I'm just testing the fit here making sure I don't have to take a little bit more thickness off. And they fit pretty much perfect. Here I'm checking that they're square and I was extremely surprised at how square they were. They were absolutely spot on. Here I'm just cutting this little notch out. I'm not sure exactly what to call it, but I'm gonna call it a notch. Um, this is how the wand will actually be kind of sat in there. You guys will see how that's gonna work. So I was trying to think of a way to lay out this arch and I didn't have like a big enough circle for a template. So I just put my still rule inside of a clamp and clamped it down to the right arch that I wanted and I just traced it out. I thought this was actually pretty cool and uh, I'm definitely gonna have to do that again. And here I'm just cutting that arch out roughly on the bandsaw and I will fare that curve with my spoke shave. I decided to add like a kind of a little chamfer on the outsides of the styles and rails. I couldn't really decide what finish to use on this. I knew it wasn't going to be uh, touched very much so it didn't really matter too much so I just added some beeswax and I finished it off with some paste wax. My goal here was to try to darken the wood as less as I possibly could. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the darkened oak look. I kind of like the natural white look of it but it's pretty much impossible to do that whenever you put the finish on. So 
So here I'm just cutting the slots for the walnut wedges that's going to go in the tenons. I really wanted to do the wedges on all of them, but the rabbit in the back made the back wedges pretty much impossible, so I just did the front ones. It turned out alright, so I'm not too unhappy with it. The way I cut these wedges was not scientific to say the least. I just cut a couple of angles. I didn't, I didn't really have any layout. I just kind of eyeballed it. It worked out perfectly fine. And uh, you guys will see that in just a second. So all you do for the wedges is you just kind of seat it in there just a little bit and hammer it through. I just put a little bit of glue on it, it didn't need much. Um, it's pretty much a, a friction fit anyway, so the glue is just kind of there to add a little bit more support. When it comes time to flushing up the tenons, there's plenty of ways to do it. Um, the way I did it here was just to cut it down with a handsaw and finish it off with a hand plane. And that worked pretty much perfect for me. Speaking of hand planes, I've got a Japanese hand plane in the mail right now. Uh, it's a plane that I've been wanting for a long time and I can't wait to tune it up and uh, share it with you guys. So when designing this thing, I wanted a couple things. I wanted A, for the wand to sit upright. I didn't know exactly how I wanted to do that. And I also wanted to be able to remove it. And so that means the back panel has to be able to be removed. And that's why I decided to go with a, a rabbit. And I also wanted to have glass in the front that's not removable, which is kind of scary because if it breaks, there's nothing really I can do. So there we go, it is finished. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, I've got a lot of videos coming up here soon, some really awesome ones. I got a table saw cabinet that I'm working on right now. So if you do not want to miss that, make sure to subscribe. If you like this video, make sure to like, and uh, thank you guys for watching.